Hello, on the final, you're going to have a problem that's about robot singularities. And so my goal today is to cover a few concepts about singularities that you need. And so the singularities are related to the Jacobian of, the, of a robot. Remember, the Jacobian allows us to go between joint velocities and indefector velocities. So the equation that we look at is that our ineffective velocities is equal to the Jacobian times Q dot. And so we're going to be able, we're going to look at the singularities of a robot. In order to do that, you need to have on your final, on your uh, crib sheet, you need to have the definition for a three by three matrix or you have to have it memorized. But to remind you of what that looks like, if we have the determinant of submatrix A, and A is a three by three matrix, so a three by three. Uh, we can just label these as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And so the determinant of this matrix is going to, you can expand along any column or row, uh, but the format is, if we expand along the top row, is A times the determinant of the remaining uh, co-matrix, E, F, H, I, minus B times D, F, G, I, plus C times D, E, and G, H, the determinant of that. And if you work that out, then you have six terms, three positive and three negative. And so given an arbitrary three by uh, Jacobian, then you take the derivative of this, and then you can look at this derivative and see, where do I get zeros in here? Because those zeros are going to be robot singularities, uh, places where your matrix loses rank and that's interesting because where J loses rank, that means that there are some velocities that are no longer accessible. So let's get started with uh, an example. So the examples that I will give you, it'll all be in the form of I hand you a matrix, a, a Jacobian, and then you need to figure out what is the determinant of it and where are the singularities. Uh, so, for my first example, I'm going to have to give you the dh parameters. Well, you'd have to have the, the dh parameters. So, here's a, a certain robot. It's a Revolut, Revolut, Prism. Speaking of robot, so joints 1, 2, and 3, uh, we've got our r values, our alpha values, our d values, our theta values, and those are going to be uh, 0, 0, 0, uh, negative pi over 2, negative pi over 2, 0, 0, 0. D3, which is our variable here, and then our first star revolute. So we've got negative one star, negative two star, and zero. So this robot that we have, it has no offset for the first two Ds, and it's got no radial offset, which means this is a spherical robot. And so if we draw our first coordinate frame here as. Uh, so the first question is what does this robot look like? Well, I'm going to draw my base frame first got an x0 and a uh, z0 and my first twist is our uh, theta 1 so I've got a, a joint here that's rotating around this axis and so as it rotates it can move my x1 to another degree so I can rotate around here that's the theta 1 and I might get a new x1 angle I have a rotation about that axis by negative pi over 3. So I take my x-axis to, to figure out where z1 is, and I'm going to go negative. And so I get into the board, I get my z1. And that z1 is where my second degree of freedom is rotating around. So into the board, I've got this z1 that comes out here. I've got this rotational degree of freedom there. And it, as it rotates, my x2 then is going to be uh, parallel to that. So let's just write x2 in a black. So I've got, as I rotate this angle here, is going to be theta 2. And my x2 is in this direction. And I've got an off, uh, a link twist of negative pi over 2. So I do a negative pi. 
Z2, along Z2, I've got my final degree of freedom, which is uh, some sort of prismatic joint. So this whole distance from here to the end is Q3. And we want to know where are the singularities in this matrix. And so I'm not going to expect you to find the singularities because we've got a different question that's about that. So I'm just going to give you the Jacobian, and I'm going to give you the the j 11s the velocity components of the Jacobian, which equals to uh, d3 s1 s2, uh, negative d3 c1 c2, and negative c1 s2, and negative q3 d3 uh, c1 s2, negative D3, C2, S1, and negative S1, S2. We've got 0, D3, S2, and negative C2. So this is our Jacobian. We want to find the singularities. To do that, we take our determinant. And so I'm going to expand along this row. I'll expand along the first column. That'll be simple enough. So I got D3, uh, S1, S2 times the determinant of negative D3, C2, S1, negative C2, uh, negative S1, S2, D3, S2, minus a negative, minus a negative, so D3, C1, S2, times the determinant of my opposite, my co-matrix up here, which is negative D3, C1, C2, negative C1, S2, and D3, S2, negative C2. So the next step is to evaluate this matrix. I get D3, negative gives us a plus. Plus on this side I've got D3 C1 S2 times D3 C1 C2 squared oh, minus a minus so plus D3 C1 S2 squared. Insert space. Let's write the answer above here. So we've got uh, C2 squared, S2 squared in there, which is going to be 1. So we get uh, D3 squared times S1, S2, in our common times an S1. Plus on the other side, we've got D3. C1, S2, and again, you'll notice that we've got our C2 squared and S2 squared. Uh, so those are going to equal 1. So we've got times D3 squared C1. So I'm going to, again, erase this so I have this all in place. C1, C1, S1, S1. And so what this equals is D3 squared um, S2. And so this is saying that I have singularities. With, you know, if this equals to 0, then we have singularities. 
what does that mean? Well, in this case, if this d3, if its absolute value is zero, uh, then I have a singularity. In this case, that's when this uh, distance of the prismatic joint is reduced to zero. And so, um, you know, if I have my prismatic joint, I've got everything is located at the origin. Uh, I cannot generate any velocities in any direction because I have, you know, my moment arm is zero. So if this is zero, you know, that corresponds to a robot that has, you know, my two orthogonal rotation joints when I'm rotating around a point. So I get no, no distance. The other term I have in here is S2. This would also become zero if theta2 is equal to zero, is equal to, uh, so if theta two is equal to uh, pi, you know, is equal to, uh, yeah, zero times pi. It, well, it's equal to k times pi, where k is in the integer. So d3 equals 0, or uh, theta 2 equals k pi. And what does that mean? Well, that means that you know, when, my, when it's equal to k pi, second degree of freedom. That's when my, my second degree of freedom is equal to zero. So I've got um, my rotation joint one on this axis, rotation joint two on this axis. It's the k pi, and I've got this joint at the edge, and so that is when uh, my robot is either pointing straight in the air, or you know my robot is pointing straight down. In this case, you know, I am aligned again with uh, Z0. So this means that Z3 is parallel to Z0. And when you're parallel with your axis, that means that a rotation of my zeroth joint is not going to change, you know, impart any velocity onto this arm. And so these are the singularities. If I'm pointed straight up, uh, now as I rotate my base joint, I'm not generating any velocity there. 